Captain Scott here. Um, just wanted to show you how we do drone comb removal. Uh, I, I know there's a lot of talk about uh, different IPM techniques from mic control. One that you can do that requires no um, synthetic or organic miticides, uh, no treatment in other words, is drone comb removal. Uh, we know that Varroa overwhelmingly prefer to lay their eggs in drone brood. Um, so if we can get them under a capped drone brood and remove that, stands to reason we're removing a large portion of the mites. Um, so obviously they sell that green plastic drone, drone comb. Um, you can use that. I've used it in the past. Uh, it's kind of a pain in the ass though. Um, you got to put it in, wait for it all to be drawn out, lay, cap. Then you got to take it out, put it in the freezer, kill all the drone brood. You put it back in and then the bees clean it up. Um, I don't like that for a couple reasons. Um, you know, it's an extra step. I got to go now, um, take it out, put it back in, get it cleaned up. Uh, what, what we've been using is just foundationless frames. Um, I really like this method. It's really easy. Uh, it, it saves a step. Um, the other nice thing about this, is you can see this frame, um, there's a lot of drone brood in here. But there's also some, some nectar being stored in here. There's some um, pollen being stored, capped honey. Um, occasionally you'll find it. It might even have some worker brood in it. I don't want that going in the freezer. I don't want to lose all that. Um, so the nice thing about this is I can just cut all this, all this out and I can save, save the parts that I want. So basically the whole middle, um, and when I put this in, I use these wooden uh, barbecue skewers to give it some strength. I actually don't need to do that anymore, but this is an old frame. So I'm just gonna cut this whole big chunk out. And now I could just put that right back in, let them start drawing that comb back out again. Um, but now that saves me the step from having to put a, a frame in here while I take the green plastic frame out, put it in the freezer, wait a day or two to get, the, get it frozen, put it back in. That's a whole step I'm avoiding by doing this. Um, it's easy, it's cheap. Uh, when you got old junky frames that maybe the, the foundation got all chewed up in the middle, you're gonna throw them out. Just cut all the old foundation away, keep the frame, and now you can use that as a drone removal frame. And as you can see, I just put a D on top, so when I'm doing a quick scan, I know when I'm looking in here, that's gonna be my drone, drone frame. Um, key is you've gotta get it before they hatch. Um, you wanna get it when they're capped. Before they're capped, the mites probably aren't in there. They go in right before the, the cell is capped. So you wanna wait until that drone brood is, is capped. But if you let it emerge, basically you've turned your hive into a Varroa factory. So it's really critical that you get it before you allow it to hatch out. Um, but you can see those are all cells with potential Varroa in that I'm removing. Um, like I said, quick, easy, ticks all the boxes for me. So that's, um, that's how we do our drone, drone removal. That was a tip we got from uh, Kirsten Trainer uh, when she spoke to us a few years back. Um, I started using it as soon as I heard her talk on it, and uh, we used it ever since. It's worked really well, so that's my uh, tip on drone removal. Thanks.